Hi everyone and Happy New Year. It is January the 1st here for me and I am here with my December wrap up. Now for December I had a very ambitious TBR. I don't remember exactly how many books I had on it but I think it was close to like 11 or 12 and I think I did respectable. I read eight and the majority of what I read was on my TBR. I did have one book come that a friend had recommended them to me, and I thought, yeah, why not throw, it, you know, put some fantasy into the science fiction I was reading. But the rest are from my original TBR video. And then I had one DNF, so I'm actually going to start with the D DNF. I DNF'd Red Rising. I was just not able to get into this book, and. I think that this is going to be a permanent DNF. There's other books where I've DNF'd them before. And then I still decided later on to try them. But I think this one is going to be a permanent one. Just because the style of the story was not interesting to me. Even though the concept, overall concept, was. The execution just does not have me interested in reading anymore. But... For the rest of the books that I read, they all ranked four and fives for me. So overall, it was a very good reading month. So I first read in the month of December, Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire. This is part of her Wayward Children series. And I have, I have, sort, of, I have sort of been reading them out of order. I read one, then three. And so I was like, okay, I want to go back and read two. And since I've read one... I know the ending of what happens in book two, basically. It's one of those stories where if you read two, it, it kind of spoils you for book one. If you read one first, it kind of spoils you for the ending of book two. doesn't really matter for me. But down among the sticks and bones, you're following the twins, Jack and Jill, as they go on their adventure to a place that has vampires and scientists that can raise people from the dead. I know the book spent a lot of time setting up the lives of the girls beforehand, which I think was interesting, but I think we got way too much. I think it got to the point where it was just like beating us over the head. So by the time they got to their world, I, was, I wasn't interested so much in the interplay between the girls anymore. I was more interested in like the ramifications of the decisions that they had made. Everything really like their early lives could have been summed up very quickly and then more time given to them in their fantasy world or in their portal world but overall I did give this book four stars and I do enjoy this series it's just I like some books more than others so then I read the story Emergency Skin by N.K. Jemison, and I really enjoyed this this is, I think, a great example of a story where the main character is not the protagonist or the antagonist, because the main character is the AI, the person talking to the protagonist who then goes and does everything. And I think it, it was very well done. I enjoyed the story very much. Um, it took me into a world of what could be, and... I wouldn't mind having more stories from that world, universe, or setting. And I gave this one five stars. The third story I finished in the month of December was Ancillary Sword by Anne Leckie. And I had read Ancillary Justice many years ago. And I've always wanted to read Ancillary Sword. And it was also on my one of my space opera lists. So I was like, here I go. I'm excited to get back in. I really enjoyed Breck. And I wanted to know more about what she was going to do. Something that I think Anne Lucky did a fantastic job doing is if you picked up Ancillary Sword before Ancillary Justice, you still get a complete story and one that you can understand. And since it had been years since I had read Ancillary Justice, the catch-up info that she gave was enough. It was enough for me to understand what was still going on. And I really enjoyed it. And this one, Breck is 
gone to a planetary system and she so there might be some mild spoilers for the first book and what I'm going to say but and Breck has the approval of some of the Ananda clones for her mission to secure the system and how even though you know so she goes and she says hey this is the situation that's going on very straightforward you know not hiding anything from anybody and everybody acts falsely with her and you know just how she has to navigate the system I think it was a very interesting play where some people accused her of being a savior character and she's like no I just want things to be you know up to a certain standard it's not my job to save you so I thought that was an interesting discussion uh, it, remind me, it reminded me a lot of the discussion of the white savior, the person who comes in and wants to make everything better. But yeah, so really enjoyed this book. Gave it five stars and I have Ancillary Mercy on my shelf and I really want to pick it up and start reading it as well. Then the next book I finished in the month of December was Leviathan Wakes. Now this was a book that intimidated me. It was a chunker of a book and there's been so much hype around it I was really not sure of how I was going to feel about it especially because I had tried re watching the Expanse series and I hadn't gotten into the TV show but I have enough experience with adaptations not doing justice to the source material that I still wanted to read the book and I ended up liking it actually a whole lot I think it, you follow two perspectives, Detective Miller and Captain Holden, and I think it was the right balance, especially because you weren't given all the information about everything else that's going on in the society, whereas I think the TV show was trying to do too much. It's trying to give you all the information at once. And, and so I gave this book four stars. The next book I finished in the month of December was in an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. And then this is book four. This follows Lundy. And again, we get into the writing style is really what knocked this down for me. I did end up giving it four stars, but we don't see a lot of Lundy in the world. And I realize this was a stylistic choice by the writer, but you are told everything. You're told, 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 and you never actually get to see it. Like you don't get to see the fight with the wasp, wasp queen. You just are told about it after the fact. And you said, these are the ramifications and feelings that she's feeling about it, but you don't actually see the character feel those things. So that was really what marked it down. Otherwise, I thought the premise was interesting. You know, the world was interesting. And again, there's the part at the end, the last decision that Lundy makes. That felt jarring for me. It didn't feel real. It, The Lundy that I had been following up until that point knew she had to make a decision and was very firm, you know, that she would make one. And then all of a sudden, what she decided didn't make sense in my understanding of the character. Lundy is in the first book, so it has to work a certain way. Then the next book I finished in December was the book that my friend uh, suggested to me, and that book was Hounded by Kevin Hearn. I've heard some people compare it to Dresden Files, but like the a lesser version, I didn't get that vibe at all. And I, I read Stormfront by Jim Butcher. To me, this felt like, you know, it, it's definitely paranormal and fantasy in that, that same realm, but it had a completely different flavor and different outlook. I do agree with the criticism that everything seemed very convenient. Everything worked into one another, and we didn't really see Atticus struggle all that much for things to happen in his favor. It just kind of seemed like, oh, we have this issue, and then something pops up to be like, and this is how you can easily solve it. That, that was um, very obvious. However, how everything was layered, everything that then popped up to 
be actually of use and help later in the book he did or the author did a very good job of inserting that at the beginning with casual mentions and so the way it was done when it came up later I'm like oh of course because we talked about that at the beginning it, everything made sense and I am actually interested in reading more of this series was it perfect no but was it fun yes and I did give it four stars so then the next book I read in the month of December was Old Man's War by John Scalzi. Now this had a quote on the front that likened Scalzi to Heinlein. I do like Heinlein's writing most of the time, but Heinlein is a very character-driven uh, writer and less plot-based. And so seeing that quote kind of set up the expectation of that sort of story. And that is what the book is like. Um, you're following... John Perry as he decides to join the war at 75 so he can have a new start on life and you just follow him as he goes through things but yeah there's not again it, it was very Heinlein-esque and I do like Heinlein-esque stories I'm a character reader and so as long as your character is, in, is interesting I will forgive lack of plot or anything else because I'm following a character. I'm cool. So I gave this four stars because it was not a perfect ex execution, but it was decent. It, it was interesting. And I probably in the future will pick up the companion books that go with it. So the last thing I finished in the month of December was Nine Fox Gambit. Now this is going to be a complete reversal from what I shared with Red Rising. I originally had DNF'd Nine Fox Gambit. In the first couple chapters, I just didn't get into it. And it, you know, I was like, I'm done. I'm not interested. But because it was on my space opera list, I was like, all right, I'll give another shot. And actually, you know, I, hearing other people really like it made me go, well, maybe I need to give it another chance as well. And I really, really did like this book. Uh, this is kind of a, or not kind of, this is a military science fiction, but it's set in a different military setting than something you see a lot of the time. Uh, people, or the soldiers fight in what they call formations, and then because of, oh, I forget the series, I think it's like the Don Shard series by Catherine Asaro, that was kind of made sense to me because her she has an army there that fights in geometric shapes. And so the formations, I was like, oh, it's kind of similar to that. If you're in that shape, yeah. So you have a little bit of magic going on and a lot of math. And I think it was the whole math idea that threw me out the first time because I am not a math person. But going further in, and once I got to know Karis better, I, I was hooked. I wanted to know what was going to happen. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. As she had the ex-general inserted into her head and they went to go fight a siege on one of their own fortresses that had rebelled. So it was a very interesting book and everything made lo everything that happened logically made sense all the way to the end. So I am definitely going to be reading the next couple books to see where they go. And I'm glad I gave this book another chance. So yeah, that was my December wrap up. If you have read any of these books, please let me know down below what you thought of them. And if you have read Red Rising and you really, really enjoy it, tell me why. And then maybe I will pick it up and try it again in the future. Thank you and have a good day.